Hello, sweet family. I'm glad you're here. Grace and peace to you. Well, I think waiting is one of the hardest things to do and do well. Waiting is such a big part of living, and you would think we would all be experts at it. But sadly, many people just cannot wait well. For example, when my husband and I go out to dinner, we generally will move on to another restaurant if when we get to the one we were going to, there's a wait for a table. One reason is we just don't think there are many places worth waiting for when there are other good restaurants with perfectly good menus and no wait. Or there's the grocery store. I will select times to go based on what I know about when a store is the least busy if I can coordinate that with work. And that applies to just about all mundane tasks like that. Part of that is just good time management. I hate to waste time. But part of it is a lack of patience too and not being able to rest in the moment and allowing myself to be too busy. In some cases, how busy we are is a choice. Let's face it, waiting can be painful, especially when you are waiting with small children, like maybe at a doctor's office. Even if you have well-behaved kids, it can be exhausting. I could go on and on with examples of how hard waiting is in general, probably because even though I have had so very much practice with waiting, I am still not good at it at all, <laughs> but you get the idea. So you probably know where I am going with this. We are all in a holding pattern, if you will, waiting for Jesus to come get us. Some have been waiting longer than others. Jesus woke me up in 2020. I have often wished I had been awake longer, like some of the old timers. I cannot imagine the long adventure they have had and envy that. But God knows me, it's possible I would have imploded already if I had been waiting any longer. It seems to be all about redeeming the time. Ephesians 5.16 Redeeming the time because the days are evil. And boy, they are, aren't they? Also, Colossians 4, 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. It's about what we are to do while waiting for Jesus. As I have prayed about this, asking God both to help me wait and that He would just go ahead and come get us, He showed me that there have been some upsides to this waiting. There were benefits, opportunities, and rewards along the way. And there will continue to be should He tarry any longer. He won't leave us before He comes to get us. He brought to mind seven blessings or opportunities that come with this waiting we have been doing. Keep in mind His blessings are infinite, and what I'm about to share is only the tiniest slice of the abundance He provides. These are the ones I felt applied to our current situation. I bet you can think of more. Of course, the obvious opportunity is the chance to really get out there and reach out to people we care about and complete strangers, and share the gospel with them, hoping to plant the seeds of salvation. I think all of us in this watching family have all taken steps in this direction during our time of watching. Another opportunity was to make an effort to heal hurting relationships. In view of eternity, life is too short to be at odds with people. It has been an opportunity to ask for and to give forgiveness. That, in and of itself, is a step toward freedom if you think about it. Knowing time is short also can help us to pick our battles with the people we love. Maybe some of the issues we have with others are not that big of a deal in light of eternity. Maybe we have more love for our family knowing soon that our sin nature will be gone. And none of that sticky old sin will inflict pain in our relationships anymore. Knowing that can make it easier to bear patiently until it does come. We have also been given time to learn as much as we can about God's Word and His plan for not only us, but for the ages. It seems like the whole Watch community is, con is continually deep in the Word and learning and sharing so much more than I ever thought possible. It has been a real blessing to me to see others so in love with God's Word. It is contagious and makes me want to make the Bible my favorite hobby, as Chuck Missler used to say. He always encouraged making the Bible your hobby, the thing you devoted most of your free pleasure time to, and said there is such a blessing involved in that. I do believe he was right. We have also had the opportunity to strengthen and clear up our beliefs. 
I didn't realize how wide the spectrum was on the doctrines of grace and faith and works and all that until I saw all the arguing and also all the very different takes on Bible prophecy, the pre-trib and the post-trib groups, the faith alone and the faith plus works groups, and so many others. They can't all be right, but I don't know about you, but seeing all the controversy made me really dig in and discover what God had to say on the matter, looking in His Word. Just so you know, I am 100% pre-trib and 100% grace. Jesus, Jesus did it all, amen? I could go on about that, but that is not the focus of this video. As many of us have watched alone in our real lives, we have had the opportunity to draw so much closer to God to rely on Him for comfort, companionship, and fellowship. I bet you have all spent more time on your knees in prayer since you started watching for Jesus than ever before. What sweet times of fellowship has God has held our hands, guided us through these times? Most of us have, have had no one else in our real lives to look to except God. It brings us to a place of complete dependence upon Him, which is the best place to be, a place of utter trust and rest. We have also had the opportunity to reevaluate what we are giving our time and our lives to. While we are not supposed to quit doing everything, I think it's fair to say we may have made some changes in how we spend our time. While I have never been a huge TV or movie watcher, now all that is gone. The only things I watch now are related to Bible teaching and end time stuff. I'd be in serious error if I didn't mention the opportunity so many have had to become friends through the different channels on YouTube. While it is not the same as being in real life, I think God knew we would be mostly alone and that we would need some support, so He grouped us together. I think it is remarkable that so many of us watch so many of the very same channels. The same people show up on the same Watchmen channels over and over again. I don't think that was an accident. I think that although our small, real-life groups of family and friends may have no interest in what we are watching for, God did put us in a much larger online family. I've said it before, but I would estimate that among my small corner of YouTube, I am in a family of over a million people who are all pre-trib in grace and looking for the Lord's return. That's not a small family. I also speculate that God has set up families just like that all over the internet around the world that we don't even know about. I think He has grouped us together this way out of His mercy and kindness, and I think He enjoys us watching He enjoys watching us grow together. I am so thankful for all my online family. Well that was seven, but I just thought of one more. Actually, I've got eight benefits of waiting for the rapture. We have had the opportunity to clean up our acts. It's a sobering thought that we will see Jesus face to face. Many of us have spent the time doing everything we can to make changes that will be pleasing to Him, not out of fear of being left behind or losing salvation, because all believers will go in the rapture, but because we love Him and have turned from loving the world to caring about what He cares about. And He cares about our conduct and our holiness. We can be thankful we will have less unconfessed sin at the Bema Seat than we would if we were not watching and waiting. We have had special advantage in that regard, hallelujah. I looked up the word wait to see how it was used in the New Testament. It is used 34 times, and most of those times, not everyone, but most are about waiting for Jesus to come, in one way or another. So what we are experiencing is nothing new. God has blessed us with the lessons learned from waiting so that we can grow closer to Him and learn more about Him. Although we do not like waiting, especially in our fast-paced world, it actually strengthens us. I used to not understand how Isaiah 40:31 could be true, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I don't know about you, but I have never really felt strengthened or renewed in waiting, and weariness can be a way of life. But when I look at the character developed by times of waiting, I can see that this verse is absolutely true. I may not feel like I can mount up with wings as eagles, but we live by faith and not feelings. 
Waiting absolutely develops strength and the ability to press on even when we have to run hard or walk long roads. Waiting on the Lord develops our patience and our endurance, whether we feel like a million bucks while we're doing it or not. Romans 5, 3-5 says, But we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Sweet family, we can all agree that on the surface, waiting is the worst. We are ready now, or so we think. But God has our best interest in mind and in His precious heart. He loves us enough to help us grow through waiting. Hang in there, my online family. We are all students in the school of waiting, it seems. I feel like we are in the dissertation phase of a doctoral degree. I have heard that when candidates for doctoral degrees get to the end and are ready to defend their dissertation, they think they cannot take it anymore. They are worn out. They don't want to talk to their professors anymore. They can't learn anything else about their topic, and they are sick and tired of it all. It's a real burnout situation. But they finally reach the day of their defense of the dissertation, and just like that, it's over and they are officially PhDs. Brothers and sisters, one day soon we will all receive a PhD in waiting and will have mastered it. He will come and confer on us that degree, and all the waiting and the struggle now will be so worth it, and will also fade away from our memory as we move forward with joy into the new life that awaits us in eternity. That is just so exciting. Oh, and one final observation. God waits too. 1 Peter 3.20 says, Which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein a few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Isn't it good to know He is the master of playing the long game when it comes to waiting? I'll leave you with some of the verses that talk about waiting for Jesus. Love you guys, and I'll see you on the next one. If you have stumbled across this video, know it was no accident. You may be searching for some answers. I promise you the only place to find the truth is in Jesus Christ and in His Word, the Bible. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. 
God wants to give you the free gift of salvation. He wants you to he wants to adopt you into his family. How can you become a part of God's family? You call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By calling on his name for salvation, it means you believe he is the son of God who shed his blood and died, taking the punishment for sin that all of us deserve, and that he rose again the third day. Once you believe that, you are saved and are eternally secure in your salvation. You are adopted as a child of the Most High. You now have no fear of death, for when you die, you will be with Jesus in heaven. You also do not need to fear the future, for God holds your future in his hands. I pray you will believe on Jesus as Savior. Feel free to leave a comment with any questions. I love you all.